Time is a river, and history is a confluence of many tales. In 1721, when Texas was a province of Mexico, the Spaniard Marques San Miguel de Aguayo stood beside the tributary of a river not far from here and named it Bosque, the Spanish word for woods and the namesake of our county. Aguayo, like many others before and after, would be drawn to the waters, hills, and valleys of this extraordinary territory. Throughout the centuries, they would all leave an indelible mark on this land, their passions, dreams, travails, and triumphs all flowing into a legacy of who we are today. Our oldest known inhabitants made their home here in the rock cliffs along our river over 11,000 years ago. The burial remains in the Horn Shelter site have produced the only two sets of Paleo-Indian skeletons found in North America. The tools found beside their skeletons provide some of the most detailed archaeological clues to the lives and cultures of the earliest Americans. The Smithsonian recognizes it as one of our country's most significant archaeological discoveries. Thousands of years later, numerous American Indian tribes would be drawn to the remarkable qualities of the region's geography. Tonkawas, Wacos, and Tawakonis roamed throughout Central Texas during the 17th and 18th centuries, reaping the bounty of game and natural resources to be found here including large herds of bison that once roamed the territory in massive numbers. When Sterling C. Robertson obtained a grant from the Mexican government to colonize the area, a wave of European settlement began that would catapult these diverse cultures into conflict. Their most violent resistant came from the Comanches, known as the Lords of the Plains, and the most powerful Indian nation in the American Southwest. Although some tribes established relationships and alliances with the new settlers, the Comanches were fierce antagonists. Their struggle for dominance is one of the most violent and tragic eras in Texas history. Throughout the latter half of the 19th century, immigrants flocked to what is now Bosque County. Texas had become a state and offered 320 acres to each family that would settle in the new county. Norwegians, in particular, answered the call. Many were seeking religious freedom from the persecution they suffered as members of the Lutheran Church. There was also a severe shortage of land in their home country. Drought and crop failures created even greater hardship. America offered hope. Thus began one of the largest exoduses from Norway to the United States and Texas. Kling Pearson, the father of Norwegian immigration to America, led the settlers to the region, where they established settlements along the Brazos and Bosque rivers. Imagine the exhilaration and sense of freedom these newly arrived homesteaders must have experienced gazing out to the rolling landscapes, canyons, and rivers. Endless possibilities. They would turn their dreams into reality, building distinctive Scandinavian-influenced homesteads. They brought their Norwegian traditions, including their unique dress and intricate craftwork. And after years of religious persecution, they embraced the opportunity to construct houses of worship that stand as lasting architectural statements in the community. But perhaps most importantly, these adventurous Scandinavians brought a strong work ethic, a desire to better themselves, and an eagerness to develop the land Texas provided them. Qualities carried on in subsequent generations. Elise Varenschold exemplifies this Norwegian determination. An outspoken journalist and progressive thinker in her home country, she set sail to America at the age of 32, pursuing a better life in Texas. Her memoirs vividly capture the time and place. There are 19 Norwegian families in our settlement. They are all satisfied, and I know of no one who wishes he were back in Norway again. They are all prospering. German immigrants soon established their own vibrant communities that would enrich our county for generations to come. 
Together, these Nordic and Germanic cultures have created a unified community that is the essence of Melting Pot America. It's hard to imagine now, but cowboys once drove massive herds of longhorn cattle across the Brazos River not far from here. The famous Chisholm Trail made its way across the river near the town of Kimball. John A. Lomax, a local boy from Meridian, with a keen ear for music, was fascinated by the cowboys who would sing ballads around their campfires at night. The fledgling musicologist would carefully transcribe what he heard. His passion would become his profession. He would collect, record, and publish hundreds of frontier ballads. Decades later, Don Edwards, the cowboy poet and singer, would keep the cowboy legacy alive by performing many of these and other timeless cowboy songs for audiences around the world. His album Saddle Songs and Songs of the Cowboy are included in the folklore archives of the Library of Congress. Barbed wire fences would soon herald the end of the great cattle drives. Cowboys moved to the ranches but kept their deep traditions of song and poetry alive from one generation to the next. But a new technology would soon change the region forever. The railroad. Rapid communication and travel opened Bosque County to the larger urban centers like Fort Worth, Dallas, Houston, Kansas City. Soon the community's educational opportunities would expand as well. With the help of volunteers and donations from a Norwegian family, the Lutheran College of Clifton was established in 1897. Meridian College was founded a few years later. Progress was on its way. A half century later, Bosque County would officially usher in the modern era with the building of the Lake Whitney Dam and Reservoir. As the county population has increased, cities such as Clifton have strived to honor the past while embracing the future. The area has also become a magnet to nationally recognized painters, photographers, and sculptors who seek out its unique landscapes and sense of place. In fact, the Texas Commission on the Arts has designated the town of Clifton as its 13th cultural art district. The character of the land, the oak trees, the grasses, the, the hills certainly are inspirational and it's just beautiful. The light is good, the air is clean. So from a standpoint as a painter, there is a lot of opportunity and it's just inspirational. There are probably more artists here in Bosque County than there are in Santa Fe per capita. You know. Time is a river, and we are reminded of the many stories that flow together here. Founded on the collection of Jacob Olson, this museum is not a collection of artifacts, but a chronicle of our life in Bosque. Many stories converging into a legacy of who we have been and who we will become. Our future is bright. Welcome.